Hey everybody, welcome to this week's podcast, C3 Church Global Podcast. My name is Phil Halbert, I'm the Global Communications Manager and with me today uh, we have some very special guests from around our movement. Uh, we're going to be talking all things social media and aiming to help you and your church uh, to utilize this space as best as you can uh, and talk around the purpose of social media and give you some practical tips and tricks uh, to just help you improve uh, and engage with your church community and further afield. So with me today, I have Joel Burden, Pastor Joel Burden, all the way from KL in Malaysia. He hey, hey. Emma run the church there, but also uh, he is the founder of a wonderful organization called CloudCut, which is helping churches around the world in this space. So he's going to offer some great uh, advice. So welcome, Joel. Good to see you. Thanks, Phil. Yeah, great to have you. And we've also got Benjamin Hughes, uh, who is our wizard, uh, all things C2 Church Global video production. He's helping Pastor Phil with a lot of his different social media assets. And that's been a great uh Great little project over the last couple of months. So great to have you on, Ben. You're usually behind the camera, so it's good to have you on. Yeah, thank you. Good to be in the spotlight for once. How for bringing you straight forward. And then we've got uh, Britt Shackelford, all the way from Jacksonville, USA, a uh, part of Kindred Church and on the team there. But he's also coordinates all of our C3 Americas social media, and she's just brilliant at what she does. So it's great to have you on too, Britt. Thanks for having me. I'm excited. Yeah. Well, so we might just jump straight into it. And what we want to talk through um, and offer advice on is around the role of social media, what that plays in our church communities, why use social media, like what emphasis should that be taking uh, in our churches, all the different platforms that we can use. So I'm just going to open it up a bit of a roundtable right now. And let's just talk about the purpose of social media. What, Why should we use it? Um, and if we are using it, how can we, uh, you know, be best using our time? So I might jump straight to to Joel. You're the pro in this space, so why don't you? Uh, you apparently, know, apparently <laughs> you're the. Pro. I wouldn't say pro. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I mean, social media is is the front door. I would say for for every church now. You know, it, it was in the non digital age. People used to come to our church. They used to come through the foyer. and that would be the way that they meet our church and they greet people. But now, honestly, everyone checks out our church on social media before we come. You know, it's like a restaurant. If you're going to go to a restaurant, you're going to check out the menu, you're going to see the reviews, you're going to find how easy it is to do parking. And you can figure all of that out in seconds from a quick Instagram scroll. So I would say the reason it's just so important is because I don't think a single person has turned up to our churches without first watching us online and without having a look mm -hmm. online. And so your, your last two weeks worth of content, your last nine posts have probably made it or break breaked it breaked it broke it for someone <laughs> coming to your church so uh it's absolutely the front door for people to get engaged yeah no that's very very true and um i i love something that uh josh and georgie kelsey uh were talking around this space on a on a podcast i think last year where they talked about that idea of almost social media being the new like stained glass window of the church and it's mm. like you used to put those images up on the side of the old traditional totally. churches yeah which we have across the uk here and you're telling a narrative aren't you you're telling a story uh about who we are as a church yeah exactly yeah yeah so um you know love that idea and i mean ben or brit what what are your thoughts around purpose of social media and why we should be engaging in this platform. I think, I guess, Ben, you're kind of working in and around this area yourself. So what are your thoughts on this for churches? Yeah, I feel like social media is a twofold. One, you can really give a glimpse at the sense of community within your church. You kind of, it's a, it's a space to highlight, um, different areas within your church, whether it is, uh, you know, you're a smaller church, you got a nice community going, or if you're a church heavily focused on outreach, uh, you can kind of display those other things. Um, but it's also an opportunity to display events. Maybe it's a big Easter outreach event or a Christmas outreach event. Um, and if you use it correctly, you can actually get your posts in front of the eyeballs of people who've never heard of your church before, but are in your yeah. local area. Yeah. who might be looking for an event, but not necessarily Googling your church. 
Yeah, it's true, isn't it? Because there's just two sides of the coin, isn't it? There's you're using social media for your own church community, but it's also like Joel's talking about. It's also then that that window in for people looking onto you know trying to find church or what does your church stand for or what are the types of people there. So it's got that that two it's that two way you know both sides of the coin, isn't it? So it's kind of it's not just looking at um, yeah, it's that dual purpose, isn't it? Of like mm-hmm. engaging your own community and celebrating yeah. your own community, but then thinking outwardly to, you know, to tell that story of what's happening within your church so that people can hear what's going on. And I know, Britt, you know, you're looking after all things C3 America. So, like, with with that role and kind of the social media element of what you're doing there for the region, how do you look to kind of tell that narrative or tell that story of C3 Americas? Yeah, I mean, I think as a whole, all of our seats and churches do an amazing thing. You know, they're not they're doing more than just Sunday services. They're doing youth camps and outreaches and missions and men's conferences, women's conferences. And, you know, it's hard to show your church to a visitor in an hour and a half when they come. But when you have a great social media platform where you're able to show everything that your church is doing, people will grab a hold of that and they like that. When you show that you have a great kids ministry, it's not babysitting, you actually care about these children, people are like, I want to come check out that church. And I think for America, as you know, we want to show every great aspect of church, you know, and that's more than just a Sunday. That's being a light into our community and actually helping the next generation, helping people, and all those things. So, you know, social media is just awesome because you can show all of that and you can take risks because of social media, you know, and um, yeah. it's always fun to highlight things on stories and just really put out there what we're doing. And for churches, you know, put out what you're doing. Give people a, a behind the looks of se- behind the scenes look of what your church is doing. Show your staff meetings, show your volunteer meetings, Things like that. People like that. People want to see that you're real. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And I, you know, and I guess for anybody from around the C3 Church family that's listening to this as well, you may not realize that your church may run a social media, but then we also have social media pages for all of our regions around the world. So mm-hmm. I think now we've got uh, eleven regions around the world. So you can, you know, if you want to hear and see what's going on in. Uh, in mainland Southeast Asia or in Southern Africa or in Europe, wherever you're from, it's a great way to stay in touch with the global family uh, and to stay in mm-hmm. touch with all the amazing things that's happening. And I know I know for me, it's a it's almost like a periscope up out of my own context sometimes because it, as a church leader or as as a team member or you've been you've been living uh, and existing in a certain city for a long time, you can kind of think, oh well, is what's God doing amongst us. But there's a beautiful thing about like creating those windows in for us as a global family is to actually kind of lift our eyes and to see what God's doing around the world. And it's such an encouraging faith building moment when you can actually see, oh, look, all of those water baptisms that are happening in Africa, or all those salvations that are happening mm-hmm. in Pakistan, or like all these different stories around the world, the miracles that are happening in New Zealand, you know, the, all these stories that can just go, if if God's doing it there, he can do it here, and he's doing it, and he's working all around the world through all these different churches and across our wonderful C3 Global family. So jump on to, to, to C3 Church Global on Instagram, and you can you can start to follow all those different accounts. So that's that's the encouragement from me as our comms manager. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> moving moving across to just some practical tips. So Joel um, with his company Cloudcut is actually it's a brilliant uh, organization uh, for me and Lucy as lead pastors in our dual role. We kind of do global comms, but also we are the lead pastors of C3 London. We use Joel uh, and his team, and they are brilliant at CloudCut, helping churches in this space practically. So, Joel, what have you learned, I guess, over this last little while of founding CloudCut and moving into this space? What have you found has been the greatest help and some practical tips for Mm -hmm. some of our churches around the world in this area of social media? Yeah, cool. Well, I'm glad it's been helpful. First of all, that's awesome. Definitely. Um, You make us look great. 
<laughs> yeah, I think what what churches are really looking for is to have the digital presence that actually brings people through the doors. Because we've spent a lot of time trying to make social media feeds aesthetic, which is cool because they look great and it's impressive and it means we're not embarrassed about how a church looks. But I think they also have to be effective. So you have to be able to mm-hmm. translate people who are following online to actually people who are coming through the doors. And so that's something I'm quite passionate about is making sure that this is not just to look good. This is actually to have real results. Like we got into the business of pastoring because we want to reach people. So the investment on social media has to be worth it. So I, I guess a couple of the um, common problems we find, which is a massive task with social media for pastors, first of all, is consistency. So to actually get the posts coming out consistently is so hard. Like that is so hard. If you're managing it in a small team, when your attention's on social media, everything's going great. But the moment you get a busy week or a conference, everything goes dead, you know, and that's really a poor first impression when people go on and they see you haven't posted in three months. Um, I guess following on from that is when people do post, often it's it's not got a strategy behind it. So it's what we call like the Friday night post, which is I've just finished my sermon. Crap, the weekend's coming. Quickly post something up. And it because it doesn't have the thoughtfulness in it, uh, it's not going to get engagement. And so because the consistency's not there, the strategy's not there, it's often leading to feeds that are just dead. And so you're not going to see those visitors flow in. And so I think that's where the frustration is. And a lot of pastors probably have given up in this space because they just can't figure out easy ways to crack it. If they had more time, they would do more, right? If they had the volunteers, if they had the hours, they'd do it. But most pastors are just maxed out and there's nothing more they can give. You know, no no pastor running a small mid-sized church can do preaching, leading, discipling and 15 hours on social media every week. And so I guess that's really where the business began. That's where CloudCut started off. We wanted to try and find something that helped smaller churches to really reach people. So what we've been coming along is just helping people do those three to four foundational posts each week. And I think that's really what you need is you need a bit of a structure just to keep some consistency online. There's a, there's a bit of a strategy behind that is, is tailored to your church, your context, the mm-hmm. people that you're trying to reach. And so that obviously then frees up the local team to focus on what they need to do. Um, so I, I guess a couple of categories that I just advise everybody to think about and it's three c's it's community it's connection it's consistency community okay. connection c- consistency c3 c there it is yeah it, it, that was planned that was totally that's planned. all you need well, to remember you, you are gold yeah you there we go marketing. so community first of all community is, is really about making social media social like it's called social re- media for a, reason, for a reason because it's not about broadcasting it's about conversations And so if you just think about your feed right now with your church, think about your last seven, eight posts, how much of it was trying to build conversations with people Mm -hmm. versus just a one-way street of you talking to someone? I think that would be quite revealing. And it would probably reveal that you might need to get a person from your church, probably I'd say from your pastoral team, next steps team, something like that. Not the creative guy because Often the designers, they're great, but they're they're quite introverted and bad with people. Yes. So get the people person on the social media account. There can be two roles there. And and actually talk to people. You know, when they ask what time the service is, reply to them. And, you know, when they say something on comments, get back to them and like it and just start those conversations. And I guess the second thing then is connection. So the content that we are posting up does have to be thoughtfully done with a with a specific person in mind. And so often we're posting just general stuff, but no idea who we're trying to reach. And so you think about it like there's a big difference between a 40-year-old Malaysian and a, and a 25-year-old Australian. Their needs are different. Their fears are different. The pain points are different. So we actually encourage churches we work with, like think of a target and write that name, you know, Fred, 15-year-old British teenager. This is what he struggles with. This is the questions he has. And, and just write it down and start to brief it and then put all of your posts through that lens. Like, is this going to speak to him? Is he going to engage with this? And I guess the top tip here is your preaching in your church is probably already contextualized to who you're trying to reach because you're in your culture. The pastor's got a good idea of who makes up the congregation. So if you can take content from your messages, from your preaching, is likely already contextualized. So that would be a, a great way to save time and it stops you having to create more content. So that's community, that's connection. The last one is consistency. So you have to show up each week, every week, multiple times, I'd say every week on social media. And this is where the hours come in. 
Um, there's nothing worse than going to a, a, a restaurant or a shop or a supermarket and the thing is closed and there's no lights on, there's no one there to greet you. That's what it feels like when we go on your Facebook page that no one's posted on for three years. And I just do us a favor. Like if the, if the social media feed's got nothing on it, just delete it, take it down from the internet because <laughs> it's far better just not to have it. Just Absolutely. don't have it up there than have Absolutely. a dead one, right? And just focus on one or two channels you can really do consistently. And this is where the system comes in. So strategy is about connection, really consistency is about having a system that you can use week in, week out. So just think of a couple of posts, three to four, I would choose them. If you're asking me, I would go for a reel from a Sunday preach. We can talk about reels, I guess, and how they gain traction. I would go with some kind of carousel question post, number two, you know, probably from your preaching notes again, just create some curiosity, engage people. Number three, maybe a photo of what's happening inside your church. I know Brittany's already um, focused on that. So just try and get a, a window inside. Just think of a couple of posts, get your calendar, get your scheduler, work with a team, please. You know, it's too heavy for the pastor to carry on their own. So find someone in your church, find a remote team, whatever it is, and uh, and then start to get those three things, community, connection, and consistency. And I think you'll then start to get traction. It's going to take a long time. It's never quick and overnight. But if you keep on going, you get some real results. We had someone in our church just two years back after pandemic found a repost that someone did online. They loved the contents, they reposted it. She saw it and then she came to church, not a Christian, gave her life to Jesus, got baptized, got married to someone within the church. And all of that happened because of a repost, because the content connected. And so there's multiple stories like that in so many churches, I would say it's absolutely worth the work. Yeah, I love that. I feel like I know... I know within C3 London, we have so many people coming to church because of social media, um, you know, and uh, and hats off to CloudCap for helping us do that. <laughs> but um, no, we, you know, it, it becomes that big search engine these days, doesn't it? You're looking for a local church, you know, a lo- London's a very transient city. So they've come in, they don't have a lot of friends or existing community. So it's literally just, it's a Google search for where's my local church. And so what we're doing around that space is actually whether you know, they they come to us or go somewhere else. Um, and, you know, one of the practical things is very, you know, a couple of weeks ago, even for us, we had someone come into church, but they found it quite hard to find, which doesn't usually happen, but every time, but every now and then it does. And so, what we found is we needed to put our address onto our Instagram handle just so that people can actually very easily go, okay, this is yeah. where church is. Great. So, it's very practical. Yeah. It's there. It's on the front of your profile easy for people to find where you are. The other part of it is we tag that we're a, um, that we're a C3 Church global, you know, church. So, we, we have that tag online. Great. Some people around the world don't know who C3 is or, or they'll go, C3, what does that mean? So, having that kind of, that greater sense of what you're a part of is actually great to put on that bio as well so that people are picking up where you're coming from. But I don't, Joel, you mentioned kind of three to four posts a week. I guess for some, that might seem like a lot. Can you talk to, into that for a little bit around why you would be posting that regularly? I think to to really figure out, well, two reasons. I think consistency for, in terms of the algorithm, having a feed that does look like it's worthwhile, that people are going to follow, I think is really important. I think also just to figure out what works, like you need to have some repeating content and try it over a long period of time to actually figure out if you've got results. And if you're only putting one post up a month, you know, you've really made no progress in that area by the end of the year. But this is where I think the system really does come in. So this doesn't have to be taxing. Like if you're already podcasting your church message or you're videoing your church message, I think most churches would have both of those. Um, You can very quickly make a workflow to get a, a short clip from your preaching or from your audio podcast onto your feed, you know, and there's even AI tools that can help you now if you really don't have a lot of money. The only thing I would say with AI is make sure that it's thoughtfully done. So if you are going to use tools to speed stuff up, like please don't just overwhelm the already noisy digital world with, you know, random clips that make no sense. So use an AI tool, but use it really thoughtfully. Have a real person who's controlling that, you know, and thinking stuff through. Mm -hmm. But that would be an easy workflow from there. I think then if you've got photos already being taken at church, again, could it be the church photographer you know, chooses that. Maybe there's a best photos folder to make sure that 
you know, the people of seven random people who left church last year is not being plastered over the feed and all of that kind of stuff. Yeah, we know we get that all the time. Yeah. And, uh, you know, you need a system and a workflow there. I think even with the, um, you know, the carousel, the question post, it could be done on stories. So you could have maybe mm-hmm. the pastor highlights what we do in our churches. We just highlight a, a question or a clip or an illustration from the sermon in the notes. We yeah. pass that on to the social media guys. And so they've already got from the pastor and a kind of an objective question to bring as a discussion around social media each week. And so it's just a workflow. So I think these little systems and workflows behind the scenes can really help. There's no need to be putting in extra work, in my opinion. A church under 500, no need to be thinking about content to post because you've already spent eight to 10 hours a week on a great sermon, which is the best content in the world, you know? Go for it. And And you're just trying to, you're just trying to, you're trying to maximize what you are doing as a community. You used a word earlier on, uh, algorithm. So for those people who are not, I might lean into Ben for this one. You're, you're, you're our tech guy globally. So, and I know you've done a lot of work in this space, even with Pastor Phil and different things that we're doing. So Joel, you use that word algorithm. Does that, uh, for us as local churches and pastors and building, does this matter for us or how do we, how do we make the most of what is it and like, does it matter? Wow. That's a, a big loaded question. So, and basically an algorithm is Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, determine what content gets put in front of what person. Uh, they themselves are very strategic on this uh, because they want to maximize view time on the platform. So they're going to make sure that say Phil Hubbard gets the content that Phil Hubbard likes to look at to keep Phil Hubbard on Instagram or Facebook or whatever. Um, a, quite a deterrent to this is cheap advertising um, because everyone is quick to hit skip after the five seconds or skip ad or scroll past an ad or swipe away. So if, you, if you're someone that's kind of using social media for quick advertising, then could potentially be working against you um, in that regard. Yeah. Um, but one of the major points for algorithm at the moment across all the platforms is consistency um, and using their platform often. Um, yes, yeah, so I know. Instagram's I just changed stuff recently, isn't it? So if you're creating a reel, those kind of things, it's actually they're kind of encouraging you to not edit offline, but to use online. Correct, to use the Instagram editing service, uh, which isn't the best. Uh, And then TikTok to use the uh, cut, cut, I think it's called, um, service for TikTok. YouTube doesn't matter. They don't really care what service you use as long as you're uploading videos. Um, And then like Joel was saying, it's it's consistency. So if you're going to be posting, make sure. I always think... If you want to use social media, don't just jump on and use social media. You're best to not post anything and give give yourself and your team time to come up with a clear plan, to come up with the content that they want to post, and then post with a three-month goal in mind, a lot of content in mind, because that in the long run is going to be more useful than just trying to get something online. And then the next week you're posting something, but it's completely different vibe to the first one you did because you haven't really thought through um, what so you the want algor- to do. The algorithm essentially works to keep keep the things I'm interested in in front of me, doesn't it? So and then Correct. so that you so that you engage with the platform more, you spend more time, more focus on to onto the platform that you're using like like Instagram. So exactly. for it, so generally the way that I then understand it is the engagement level and how much you increase that engagement level with your community onto say, you know, onto Kindred's social media page, the more they then see it. So if you're Correct. posting regularly it gets buried. Uh if you're not posting regularly it can kind of get buried, but you also have to be active on social media. You have to be liking and replying to comments and actively looking through social media. 
Um, for example, Instagram um, works quite reliantly on notifications to kind of bring people back to using Instagram. So if C3 London was to make a post and you get 10 people commenting on the post, if C3 London was to then go through and comment back to each of the 10 people, then those 10 people will be shown a notification inviting them back to Instagram to look at the platform again. In turn, Instagram goes, oh, C3 London's very good at getting people on platform. Let's put them in front of more eyeballs because the more people we put C3 London in front of, the more they'll stay on Instagram or yeah. whatever the platform is. Yeah. 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 So, but I guess the, ma- the main point you made there, and I think where we're tapping into you feeding the beast in terms of the algorithm is that yeah. if you're gonna if you're gonna be on social media as a church, be on social media. Don't kind of go yeah. halfway. Like if you're in, go in because that that's when you make the most out of it. Otherwise, you can actually be spending a lot of time creating posts, creating content, but then it actually not having the impact. And for a lot of smaller churches, you may as well just jump on the phone, jump on text, and and build community that way. But yeah. if you're going to engage in social media then that that can be inc- an incredible strength for you as a church, um, but mm-hmm. it has to be engaged with. Yes, yeah, it, you've got to put in the hours for it. Got to put on the hours, and you've been putting in the hours. Up. Yeah, go, Britt. I was saying, um, you yeah, know, even identify song in your church that is good with social media. If you could recruit yeah. on your team, or maybe that's a youth yeah. young young adult that we trust. You know, like, hey, can you for an hour a day, forty five minutes a day, light our followers post and comment and, you know, build that engagement and doesn't even have to fall on the senior pastor or the pastoral team. It could be empowering someone. Uh, so you're really good with social media and just like, hey, help us. And these sort of things don't get buried or lost. So it's not yeah, uh, absolutely. It could be a and way to build somebody. It's, absolutely. And it's not even like doing the post, is it? It's like you, you can mm-hmm. spend an hour every morning getting someone just to, to go on and like so if you're following people from your community, uh, from people who are going to your church, you can actually go and like their photos as the church, engage yeah. and encourage yeah. encourage them, put a co- put a comment on their page, and that actually helps then their profile engage with your profile. So then when you are putting up something for church, they're seeing it because you're engaging with their <laughs> profile. So that's a really good tip. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. And uh, yeah, so Ben, you've been doing a lot of hours in the space of YouTube and video content. So I guess, yeah. um, can you talk to us a little bit? Because from what I understand these days, YouTube behind Google is the biggest search engine in the world. So getting churches using and utilizing YouTube is becoming more and more important. So can you talk just talking to that space and how churches might be able to engage with YouTube a little bit more? Yeah, definitely. So there's two trains of thought with YouTube. Uh, there's using YouTube as your social media platform to really outreach. I would say that that would be kind of your larger churches uh, because there's a lot of hours needed yeah. uh, to be able to do that effectively. Um, but for small, medium-sized churches, YouTube is probably the best video platform to put your video message up. Uh, it's free to use doesn't cost you a thing. Uh, it's free to use if you want to live stream your service, um, which I'm sure a lot of people have done over the last couple of years. Yeah. And quite recently, YouTube has created a podcast side of their platform where basically your you could upload your sermon as the video and then you could create a playlist out of those videos and you could make all of your videos in the one playlist that doesn't really matter and then you could turn that into a podcast um and the brilliant thing about youtube which is kind of differs to almost every other social media platform is it's searchable um and like google level searchable and just think of how many people you know who comes across a problem literally any problem but i'll just youtube it or I'll figure out how to do it by YouTubing it. Just think within yourselves, what answers could you be answering amongst your church for people asking questions on Google 
and YouTube. And remember, Google owns YouTube. So if they're asking it on Google, most likely YouTube video is going to appear as a possible yeah. answer for them. Yeah, right. And I know there's a lot of practical tips around then how you, if you are putting, if say you have that capacity as a church to put your messages onto YouTube, there's a lot of um, kind of advice these days around how you then title that message, right? For the ser- for searchability. Correct. Yes. Yeah. So you wanna you wanna be combining your thumbnail, title, and description kind of all together. Uh, you, you need to be hooking your audience in. Um, now if you're just putting your your sermon up, then that could be quite different. Maybe you're just focusing on a really good thumbnail because you want it to be eye catching for people scrolling. Um, and then your description don't just put in a title Sunday, 17th of July, 10 a.m., and then that's it. Make sure that you're thinking through, and maybe it's going off what Joel said before, your question that you have, that you want to ask to build engagement. Maybe the question is the title of that video, mm. and then a solid description. You want a couple of paragraphs in there. Yeah. You want to really describe what the video is about. In the description is also a really good place to put, you know, hot links to other social media platforms, or it could be inviting them to your Sunday service in person. Yes. Um, but you want to think through those. Don't just put the date and the, yes. the service time. You want to actually think through a title and description yeah. and then think, think through a Think how people well. not in your church would be searching for the topic that you're that you're trying to communicate, right? Exactly, exactly. And then from that space, uh, we can create reels. And I might jump back to you, Joel, because you mentioned this a little bit earlier. But obviously, Instagram and YouTube, working off shorts and reels. So, what's the best way? I guess a practical idea, because this to many can seem like a lot of work. How do I get my video cut down and then put that (laughs) onto Instagram? How, you know, I see people doing it and it looks great, but like I have no idea how to do that. So, how would you kind of yeah, yeah. move towards doing that as a church? There, there's a ton of ways. Uh, someone in your church knows how to do this already. That's what I would say. <laughs> yeah. So, find the person who, who does know how to do this and get them to do it for you. They'll be far better at it than you will. There's apps you can do it on your iPhone. You can do it on your laptop. You can get small AI plugins now relatively cheaply that help you do it. And even the captions, you can generate all of those too, either within Instagram or if you're uploading it onto shorts, you can you can do that before, use the YouTube captions. So there's so many ways. Um, again, just when it, if you are going to put a little bit more time into it, I would say come back to what Benjamin was saying there just about uh, having a hook at the start. The hook is so important. If you do have the ability to edit it, I would put the hook right at the beginning. And it might even mean that when you're chopping up your sermon, say you find a good 30 second clip of the pastor talking with his illustration and he's making a point, I would scan through the whole thing. I would find the hook and then I would move the hook back to the beginning of the clip and have that as the opener because those first couple of seconds, even if it's a written hook or it's an audible hook, that's going to be the thing that's going to want people to watch the rest of it. So just remember when you did your message, it was to a physical room. Now you're trying to convert it to a person scrolling on their phone. It's not the same method of communication. So you can do it cheaply. You can do it easily. It might not work that well. So if you are going to do it thoughtfully and you can edit it, put the hook right at the beginning and uh, that should be quite good to get engagement. Yeah, very <laughs> good. So yeah, that that video area of um, Instagram and social media has really picked up over the last 12 or so months. Um, but obviously everything that we're talking about here is visual, you know, Twitter is Twitter's, you've got your, what is it now? 160 characters. You're, you're mm-hmm. you know, typing that out. You've now got, um, you now got threads coming out of Instagram, which is just mm-hmm. space as well. Um, but then a lot of what we're doing and talking about here is visuals. It's photography and video and Brit is brilliant in this area. So we've asked, I just want to kind of tap into your knowledge around this area, Brit, because I know part of it is like we're creating this window like Joel said originally where people are kind of looking into our church and seeing it but obviously if we're taking a terrible photo you know a picture a picture tells a thousand thousand words right, right. but if but if the photo's blurry then we're not saying anything yeah. so so can you talk to us around just this area of like capturing content and photos and kind of maybe some practical tips for churches in this space yeah absolutely i mean 
but those are the OG, you know? So that's how Instagram got started. And I mean, you have to ask yourself, would you want to go in that church or like a post? If you can't even really see what the post did, it's like the photo is blurry. It's all pixelated. Like that doesn't look like a very warm and welcoming church. Um, but there are ways to make great photos cheap. You know, if you do have the budget and your church can allow a kit camera um, with an upgraded lens that has a nice low f-stop, I think that is always great. You know, a lot of churches are dark inside because of lights to set the mood and the atmosphere. So you need something that's going to be able to capture that low light. But if you don't have it, me your iPhone works great. I'm an iPhone user, so I can't see Android users in the room. But iPhone takes great photos, especially on portrait mode. Um, do that and then pair it with a nice sort of preset. You know, you can go to creativemarket.com or just type in Google uh, Lightroom presets. You can use Lightroom Mobile. You know, do that to enhance your photo, to just add a little bit of a pop to it. And what I do is sometimes I'll get a preset and that will be my starting point and then I can adjust and filter it how I want um, so that all of my photos feel and look consistent. You know, that is important because you want to have that consistent feel when someone's looking in on your restaurant, like Joel said, like you want it to feel and look how it really is, you know, don't go crazy with filters that people are like, what did you do to this photo? You're trying too hard. Just keep it nice, simple, subtle um, to make it pop. But, you know, there's so many free resources out there like Lightroom. You can get it on your phone, your iPad, um, even your computer, and you can just easily upload a bunch of photos from a Sunday or an event, add a nice clean filter on it, and then export them out and, you know, put them on a scheduling tool or anything like that that you use. But, you know, I would recommend that. And also for photos, post them vertical. A lot of people post them horizontal. Yeah. Well, you only see it for a quick second when it's horizontal, but when it's vertical, people are on it for a little bit more. Um, you know, I, just take nice, clean photos and empower people in your church to help with photos and to yeah. tag them um, when they post so you can repost. And, you know, from the photos that you take, you can also create reels with them as well. So yeah. Instagram has like built in templates that make life really easy. If you've ever seen someone re someone's reel and it will say, use the template, you like it, you can click use the template and just put yeah. your photos right on top. So that's always fun to do, super quick to do. You can get that done in like 15 minutes and then look, man, you got a reel. You could add that to your four posts a week, like Joel was saying. And, um, you know, people can really see your church and all that you represent. Yeah, wonderful. Because, yeah, you're creating reels, you're creating carousels, so you can put up to like 10 photos mm -hmm. on one post. Kind yeah. of thing. How, would you, how would you go about, because, you know, obviously then you have your grid on your Instagram mm -hmm. page specifically. Um, how would you go about picking that first photo? Yeah, for the first, I mean, you know, we, for example, like we'll do uh, for church or even for C3 Americas, we'll do Sunday recaps, you know. So if one week I would highlight a lot with um, the worship, the next week I might do more of the community aspect, just so you can kind of change up the grid. So it's that photo that to me is always my favorite. I'm like, I'll put that first because that's what people may see first. Um, but you know, you want to pick out your 10 best for that Sunday and, um, you know, just whatever highlights your church. And for me, it's just whatever my favorite is. So uh, if y'all take really awesome uh, pictures and yours is first, you know, that's my favorite for the week. But <laughs> uh, that's kind of how I pick it. Yeah. I mean, uh Joel, you and you and Em and the team do a brilliant job in this space, and obviously, you know, you're working in this space. But then, church itself, what does that look like for you in terms of a photography slash social media team? How does that operate for yeah. Hope City? Yeah, I was just going to say top tip, right? Because you're trying to get volunteers engaged here, so we never pay for photographers. We've got a bunch mm -hmm. of photographers within the church, but to get consistency, one thing we found early on to do is create a really simple photo guide. So a photo guide is just a Google Doc or a spreadsheet you have seven or eight examples of great pictures in there that you want them to imitate. 
and make sure for volunteers on a Sunday, you've got all the different ranges of photos. So you've got the shot of the preacher, you've got the worship from the back of the room, you know, you've got the close up of someone singing, you've got the car park, you've got the, the smiles on the way in. And then you pass that to all the volunteers and you say, here's what we're aiming for. Can you just make sure that over the next hour and a half, you get all of these seven shots, but obviously then use creative freedom, but this is the minimum, like, because it has to be practical, right? Um, so I think that's just been a really helpful tool, raising volunteers and making sure that a lot of people have a go. Um, otherwise you get, you, you tend to get the superstar photographers and everyone's got one, um, and they do it and then they get busy. You don't see them for four or five weeks and the photo team crashes. So I just, I, I would do that just to build some consistency with the volunteers. Yeah. So show some examples of photos that you would like to be shooting the type of exactly. photos. So to, just to give them a bit of a guide. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Brilliant. Right. Oh, wonderful. Well, guys, this has been a fantastic conversation and hopefully for all of uh, our church pastors, leaders, teams, listening to this, you've got some some tips. Um, we will definitely look to uh, do more of these and we want to help in this creative communication, social media space. So if you have any questions, uh, please uh, contact us and you can send us a message at, on, on the C3 Church Global Instagram page if you'd like, or you can email hello at c3churchglobal.com and we'd be happy to just help you practically with some of these uh, different aspects of church life. Um, but thank you all for jumping on today. I think that we've touched on some really, really great stuff and maybe we can do another one in the future just to continue the conversation. But I guess around this space, I guess if we all had kind of a last thought, is there anything that you think we haven't touched on that would be great to uh, to maybe just encourage our pastors and teams around the movement? Um, ben, anything from you? Zinkarsha, I would say take the pressure off and know that you don't have to just post straight up. You can actually take the time to think through how you want to post um, and how you want the narrative to be. Yeah, beautiful. And Britt? Yeah, I would just say, you know, it can seem very overwhelming to start. It just take bite-sized pieces, you know, identify people in your church that can take great photos, identify someone who can write the content, um, and, you know, create videos or reels and just start putting it together piece by piece but just know that when you do that people are going to see how great your church is and you know that that's exciting the stories that will come out for people just seeing what you're doing on social hopefully walking through your door soon yeah beautiful beautiful and joe don't give up social media is is the front door it's the big yeah. wide open door so open the doors make it big make it wide make it open put money in put time in because it's going to pay off it really will love that Love that. Yeah. And look, this is, you know, what does that word gospel mean? It's, it's, it was that, that guy who was running from the battlefield, going back to the city to proclaim, you know, the, vic the victory that had happened, you know, and I think in this space, we can see ourselves as those gospel runners. You know, this space of social media is where we are telling the story, not just of our church or our community, but the gospel of Jesus and what he has accomplished. And so mm -hmm. we're, we're creating this beautiful window and doorway into the kingdom for people who may not have made that step yet. So everything that you are doing in this space is so worthwhile. So be encouraged, be consistent. We're here to help. Uh, so if you, like I said, if you need any yep. uh, advice or help, you can reach out to us and we would love to, to help you in this space as a pastor, as leaders, as team. Uh, as always, on your social media, tag C3 Church Global uh, on your photos, hashtag we are C3. Uh, tag your your Europe uh, or Pacific or Africa, whatever your regional account is, uh, and we would love to just share because all of this helps each other too. As we're sharing and engaging each other's content, I would encourage you to sh share other C three churches around the movement. Share their content. Let's let's get this kind of totally happening where we're actually sharing yeah. content from around our movement. How cool would that be? Is you're not yeah. sharing your own, but we're encouraging one another and engaging. Yeah. I love it when people come to London and they're from another C three around the world. We are one big global family and so we're here to support each other and build each other. So um thank you so much for listening and uh we'll be back with our next C three Church Global podcast very soon. See you guys.